You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio, featuring the interactive interview, courtesy of WrestlingEpicenter.com. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's media briefing with Cody Rhodes, EVP at All Elite Wrestling. All phones will remain muted for the duration of the call. We will open lines individually at the end of the opening remarks for any questions you may have. If you would like to ask a question, there is a hand icon on the GoTo dashboard. Please click the icon to indicate that you have a question. We will unmute lines and announce your name as hands are raised to allow you to ask your question but again, only at the end of the opening remarks. Once you have asked your question, we will mute your line again to avoid any background noise. If you have another question, please click the icon again. You can also type in a question anytime during the presentation in the questions section on the dashboard. We will address those questions during the question and answer time. And now, I will turn it over to our moderator, Jim Woodcock. Thank you, Robin. Thank you all. Uh, Tomorrow night, All Elite Wrestling Dynamite will make its debut at 8 p.m. Eastern on TNT in Washington, D.C. With us today to discuss this historic moment for wrestling is AEW EVP Cody Rhodes. Now, let's turn the call over to Cody for some opening thoughts. And after those opening thoughts, we can open up the lines for your questions. Cody? Howdy, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. We're, we're a day away from the biggest thing I can remember in my lifetime as a wrestling fan and as a wrestler to happen, the biggest weekday just in the history of our business, potentially. And everybody, all of the EVPs, myself, Matt and Nick Jackson, uh, Kenny Omega, and Tony Khan, Everybody has kind of an origins tale for how we got to this point, whether it was the beginning of being the elite or was my departure from WWE and my subsequent bet with Dave Meltzer or Tony Khan's cultivation of this amazing partnership with Warner Media. But really, all of them are are contributing factors. They're combustible and contributing factors to the largest factor in the room and that being just this fandom, this this unserviced fandom for the last, I guess, 18 years, two decades. And a lot of you on the call are, are part of that fandom and part of just the general wrestling fandom that exists out there. So I want to thank all of you for joining me today. And I'd gladly, uh, let's get into some questions. Okay, well, thank you, Cody. Um, so we're going to open up for, for questions here in, in just a minute. And our first question um, will come from Gary Cassidy. Gary? Hi, Cody. It's Gary from Dropkick Discussions here, um, part of Sports Gear Wrestling. So it was just to ask your comments. Uh, thank you for speaking with me anyway. Um, recently, Kenny Omega was interviewed by ourselves and it caused a little bit of controversy um, speaking about the Wednesday Night Wars and it compared it as being real stars against developmental talent. Uh, what would your comments be on that? Well, I know that you know my father was rather instrumental in bringing the uh, developmental brand up from you know, the, the OVW-like situation or the FCW-like situation that I was in as a trainee and making it more of a brand, you'll never hear me uh, disparage NXT. Uh, there's a locker room full of my friends over there. I mean, literally, if you any of you have done the Performance Center tour, you're going to pass in front of my dad's boots. I think, uh, I think Kenny was just, you know, having, having a bit of fun and it was something much in character that's been going on with being the elite. Uh, 
I, I have nothing but good things to say about about the developmental brand and their success they've had and their continued success. Thanks, Gary. Um, so now we're going to open up the line to Jonathan Snowden. Jonathan, you there? Jonathan, can you unmute yourself? Jonathan, last call. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll go with uh, Sean Radisson. Or Sean Radikin, are you there, Sean? Sean, um, can you can ask your question now. Okay, we seem to be having some technical difficulties on the um, attendees. Can you part. hear me now? Yes, we can. Uh, I, I, got, I got a microphone message on my computer. So. Uh, okay, go ahead, Sean. All right. Uh, Cody, uh, you've had the chance to work with some young talent in recent years, but the angles haven't really had a chance to fully develop, like, People wanted to see you against Flip Gordon last year, building to all in. And you had a draw with Darby Allen that was great back in June at Fighter Fest. Uh, tomorrow on TNT at the debut uh, of the debut night, you're in the opening match against another young talent, Sammy Guevara. Um, can you talk about that match? And do you think with 52 weeks of TV, you'll have a, a time to build regular programs with young talent and tell the, a, a different kind of story? I think of utmost importance is introducing this new cast. Uh, Bell to Bell Wrestling and Sports Centric Wrestling, which we're providing, is is wonderful and a huge part of what we're doing. But there has to be a human connection. Uh, you've got to know who these folks are. There's a reason I, I went out uh, in between when we signed and the creation of All Elite Wrestling and started the Road Two series, producing it out of Atlanta, was to introduce these new characters. So I think we can bring that and we can integrate that. And we are going to integrate it into dynamite itself. And you mentioned uh, Darby and that draw that's unfinished business. And Darby has made it clear. He wants to go one more time. And that's something that we certainly can't just leave. That was kind of lightning in the bottle. And I absolutely uh, look forward to competing and, and being in the ring with Darby again, I will say as far as Sammy Guevara and this debut inaugural edition of Dynamite, I would like to make it clear um, that if Sammy Guevara beats me, I'm not going to full gear to wrestle Chris Jericho. By no means, Sammy Guevara will be able to take my place um, if he wins on this first episode of Dynamite in the very first match. Uh, so the stakes are high and talent, like you said, young talent, you mentioned somebody like Flip Gordon, this is this is the time uh, for for our Jungle Boys and Sammy Guevara's and the most talented young talent that is on the scene, whether you love him or hate him, and that that being MJF. Wrestling often uh, plays on nostalgia. It's just part of what we do. I I'm guilty of it 24/7 because of my last name, which I don't always get to use, but I'm I'm guilty of it too. Um, but we have to make sure we're not. We're not playing old songs. We're playing new songs. And I think, like you said, 52 weeks of television a year, I think we can do that. Thanks, Cody. Uh, next up, I'd like to call on Nick Hausman. Nick, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me, guys? Hello? Hey, Nick. We can hear you. Hi, Hi Cody. Yes, uh, thank you so much for taking the time today. Um, I wanted to follow up on what you just said about your last name. You did that video where uh, you showed off your weight belts and the Rhodes name was on the side of it. Has the issues with that name been resolved? Will you be able to use it on TV? Uh, I can use it. I won't use it, though. Um, I know that's not everyone's favorite answer, but 
I got to rub off that name plenty. And the reason I don't use it is I, this is not the romantic Game of Thrones answer that everybody wants, but the reason I don't use it is because I got so used to being the American Nightmare Cody in Japan, I love that. I love the idea of trying my damnedest to get a single name over. I got the rub off of Dusty and my family long enough. I, uh, I don't mind not using it. You'll, you'll see it every now and then. Some people, they already know. So if it's there, it's there. And if it's not, it's not. But by no, no, no means is WWE holding that, that name hostage. That is, not a, that is not a real thing. If I was to walk out tomorrow lower thirded as Cody Rhodes and announce as Cody Rhodes, nobody's going to sue us. Nobody's coming after us. There's a lot of respect between, between the families that are involved here. So, no. I, uh, I just like using my first name. Thanks, Nick. Um, next, I'd like to call on Sean Ross Sapp. Sean, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you, buddy. Sure can. Uh, a few months back, the Young Bucks had said that if Ring of Honor and New Japan had offered them dual contracts, that there might not be an AEW, at least for them. How would that have played out for you if that were the case? Ooh. You know, like I was saying in the opening remarks, all these elements that get us here are so combustible. Maybe there wouldn't have been an AEW had they accepted dual contracts. But honestly, the timeline exists because they didn't and because they did start being the elite and because I did leave WWE and because Tony Khan, uh, as a wrestling consumer and a billionaire, wanted to actually invest in us and represent the wrestling consumer because he's a wrestling consumer. So perhaps we wouldn't have an AEW had they taken those contracts. I'm not sure. My mind around that period of time was headed towards doing Double or Nothing and doing a sequel to All In, providing self-promoted events. That was where my mind was at. The idea of this overreaching larger company that that idea just became more and more real as our free agency started to loom in January. But who knows? I'm glad that they didn't. No offense to any of those promotions, but it helps get us to this point here because Matt and Nick are pivotal to, to so, so much of what happens here. We all have to provide a different thing as EVPs. And I think if you watch from Double or Nothing to Fighter to Fight for the Fight the Fallen to All Out, Every one of us performs and competes very differently, and that's the formula that works, and I'd like to keep it that way. Thanks, Sean. Um, next in the queue, we'd like to call on Connor Casey. Connor, are you with us? Ian, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. can hear you, bud? Fantastic. Well, hey, Cody, I just wanted to ask you a question regarding a comment you made on Twitter uh, last month. You you mentioned that uh, we had only seen about 40 percent of the AEW roster through the first four live shows. Um, where does that number come from? Is that part of your guys' deal with AAA and OWE? Is that this giant oh. group of wrestlers we haven't seen yet? Like, where, where's that number come from? I'm curious. It could also come from the fact that I didn't go to college and I'm not good with math. Uh, that could, it could also come from that fact. Uh, honestly, we have a lot of roster left. I don't know if I was on the nose with my 40%, but we have a lot of roster left. We also have the existing partnership with AAA, which you mentioned. There's a great deal of talent at AAA and I, and young talent, the obvious ones that, you know, like the arrow stars and black Taurus and all that, but a great deal of young talent that I love uh, to feature on dynamite weekly. You know, there's flavors of nitro here and nitro had an entire uh, cast of, of, of the, the Lucha cast itself, which we all saw grow up to be massive stars. So, I think it has a little bit to do with me being bad with numbers, but there's definitely a great deal of people we've, we've held back to this point so that they can be part of the dynamite era specifically. Thank you, Bill. Um, I'd like to call on next uh, Dave LaGreca. Dave, are you with us today? Hey, how you doing? Dave LaGreca from Busted Open. Thanks for the time. Whatever, Dave. Ask your question. I talk to you way too much. I'm kidding, man. 
<laughs> wow. Um, Cody, you said that this is the biggest weekday when it comes to pro wrestling, and this is something that you've been waiting for for a long time. I'm interested what your mindset is going to be like Wednesday night. Are you going to have time to enjoy it? Are you going to be nervous? Are you going to feel pressure? What's going to be going through your head? Well, I mean, at this point, I've had – about three sleepless nights in a row mixed with nervous puking. So yeah, my anxiety levels are, are through the roof for this event. I say it's the most important weekday in wrestling in my lifetime, but really as wrestling fans and wrestling journalists on this call, I can't think of a more important night than perhaps MTV and rock and wrestling. I really can't think of a more important night when wrestling was destination and we've got to keep it destination. So I don't mind those nerves. I don't mind as long as they're not on my face from when I have come up out the tunnel uh, tomorrow night, as long as I can perform, I like to play into my nerves. Uh, Randy Orton taught me a term a long time ago called the red light guy. Uh, when the red light's on, I can do just about anything. And uh, that's, that's who I want to be uh, tomorrow for this show. And that's who I have to be. A lot of people have put a lot of pressure fairly on us. There's a lot of promises. There was a lot of campaigning and a lot of campaign promises to what Dynamite will be, what AEW will be. And the greatest thing about it is the people making those promises are also the one in the ring. So it's, it's my job to deliver. Nervous? Absolutely. Scared? Not one bit. I'm, I'm ready for this. Thanks very much, Dave. We're going to read a question here from Jonathan Snowden. Um, so, Cody, I'm, I'm going to, this, this question is uh, from Jonathan. There will be a ton of analysis after the show, much of it focused on the ratings. But a lot of that will be done without context. So what constitutes success um, uh, for you? What are, the, what are the Turner people and advertisers expecting? Well, I think there's a number that we have in mind. I'm not going to be as naive to say that number right now. I think wrestling is one of those things where when you come back through the go position and you've had an absolute barn burner of a match where the crowd was up and down on everything and they, they took that ride with you. When you ask how it was, the truth is you already know. You heard them out there. That's going to be the biggest, the biggest test tomorrow is that, is that live audience. I think – giving them this unbelievable show in a statement building like the Capital One Arena will be a good indicator of what the next day will be when the inevitable ratings come in. I think Turner has high expectations for this, and we have high expectations. We think this is a product that people want to see. We think this is a product that will appeal to the several million people that went away uh, around 2001 and now are calling themselves the returners is my favorite term, uh, term for them. So I think we have a number in mind and hopefully we hit it. I'm sorry if I, I can't share, um, but uh, nonetheless, I think that live crowd will let us know how we did. Thanks, Cody. Let's get back to the live lines now and like to call on Rich Fan. Rich, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you, bud. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Rich Fan Pro Wrestling Torch, Cody, thank you for your time. Uh, you mentioned in your press release the unparalleled diversity and inclusiveness of AEW, and that's been recognized with some of the charity work you've done, the tag team scene, women's scene, but we have seen a dearth of wrestlers of color in the men's single scene. Can we talk? Can you talk a little bit about what you're looking to do with Dynamite with regards to that, and particularly maybe wrestlers like Trevor Aon, Sugar Dunkerton? Darius Lockhart and others who have said on Twitter that there kind of seems to be missing black wrestlers from your singles roster. Well, I think we wanted to put a product out that's congruent with today's society and a snapshot of what America and the world actually looks like. I think we're doing a good job, but that work is, is never finished. Uh, one of the things my wife has been absolutely a marvel at with this company is, is seeking out, uh, diverse superstars and wrestlers for, for, for our product. And I think we'll continue to do so. I actually will challenge you to link me up with all three of those gentlemen that you just listed and link me up uh, on social media. I'll, I'll take a look at their stuff. I'll contact, I'll contact them directly because I said this uh, 
with Ryan Sadden not too long ago on this media tour, uh, I think African American representation on our brand is 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 huge, and there are some just absolute stud men and women that I would love to be part of AEW and love to be part of Dynamite. So please link me up with them, and we are doing everything we can to continue to provide the most diverse roster and first and foremost, the best roster. Thanks, Rich. Um, how about James Dixon? James, are you with us today? <clears throat> hey, man, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I can hear you, bud. Oh, hey, Cody, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good, I'm good. Thank you for asking. Okay, um, so obviously, man, you, um, you, know, you know the uh, UK wrestling scene fairly well, having been a major figure in building its profile over the years. Um, you've already hired Kip Sabian, Jimmy Havoc, and Sadie. Are there anyone, any other people on the scene who you've worked with or seen who you're interested in bringing in? That's a great question. I, uh, I'm about to go over for the Southside show, their last show, October uh, 26th. And maybe I'll do a little bit of a, a scouting trip uh, when I go over there. I haven't been in quite some time. I'm looking forward to it. But I think as we put a lot of effort on that partnership with the UK, uh, with Fight and with ITV, and that partnership is just in its gestation. It's not all that was announced. There's more to it. It's, it's slowly all coming to the surface, thankfully. But I think it's important that there are homegrown stars on. Uh, you mentioned Kip. And Jimmy Havoc, man, Kip is, Kip's the whole, he's the whole ball of wax. Kip is an absolute star. And I, I'm sure I'd like to find uh, a few more over there. Also, we've got to talk about it. The fact that, that at a certain point in 2020, AEW is going to come to the UK for sure. And when we do, um, I, I really would like the show to have, feature a great deal of, of homegrown UK talent. Thanks, James. Um, Chris Mueller, you're up next. Chris, are you with us? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, excellent. Thank you. Um, all right, so there seems to be kind of a misconception among fans that any disgruntled WWE talents can just go to AEW. Do you guys have an ideal roster size in mind that you'd like to get to, and how close are you to getting to that point right now? That's a great, great question. I'd say we're probably in the 85% uh, kind of full up for this first, this first bit of dynamite, if that makes any sense. We've, we've gridded our TVs uh, very far back. There's a lot of emphasis on long form storytelling. So we're, we're fairly full at the moment. Definitely there's, there's some gems along the way. Um, but yeah, there is a misconception that Anytime someone is disgruntled or anytime someone has a bad Raw or SmackDown that they can immediately call or text me and it'll, it'll be done like that. But I have to say we would be doing a disservice to the crew we have now. Um, there's a lot of people that will be introduced uh, over the course of Dynamite. Some of them you've already met that people like Riho, uh, people, people like Kip, people like MJF. And it's important that we introduce introduce that crew and do them justice. Otherwise, I'd find myself in the position I was in at WWE where I felt like I wasn't being presented and nostalgia was being played instead. And I think that's important. But to answer your question transparently, I'd say about 85%. Excellent. Thanks, Cody. And, and <clears throat> we are now going to go with Joseph Stajewski, Apologies if I've got that pronounced incorrectly, but Joseph, I believe you know we're calling on you, so you're up next. And Joseph, we need to have you unmute your line, please. He was mad that you mispronounced his name. <laughs> I can spell it. <laughs> I just can't pronounce it. Um, Joseph, we'll, we'll come back to you if, if, uh, if, if we see you up on the, on the screen here. Um, Stu Myrick, are you with us by any chance? Stu? Okay. 
Stu, you're looks like you're on mute too. Very good. Oh, Stu, you with us? I am. Stu Myra okay, from Stu, Warner, you're uh, up. in Austin. Cody, it's good to talk to you, my friend. Hey, man, how you doing? I'm good. Heavy in football season, but we got to talk wrestling. Uh, yeah. I want to. I want to ask you this. Uh, you've got you've got a vast global audience that's going to tune in tomorrow night to TNT. For you know all of us that are wrestling journalists and those that follow independent wrestling, we know a lot of these talents. You know, I'm very familiar with Sammy Guevara being a tech, being a Texas kid. Talk about the process you're going to use in introducing a lot of the talent to this vast global audience, a good chunk of which may not be as familiar with the independent scene or the British scene or the Joshi scene. Well, we've got two hours of multiple clay that, that we call dynamite. And not only do we have those two hours of multiple clay, we have shoulder content that's very popular in terms of being the elite, in terms of the Road 2 series. It's about making the human connection. It's something that UFC and mixed martial arts and uh, HBO, when they were still in the boxing game, was doing incredibly well. They were really making an effort to introduce you to the men and women before they stepped into the ring and then you cared, you, you, you had love for somebody, you, you had ire for somebody. So I think it's our job to do that. And taking a look at how dynamite shapes up uh, tomorrow night, I think we're going to be successful with introducing new people as far as the key to the human connection isn't giving them an artificial character. The key to the human connection is showing the real character that they are and just turning that up. And that's what I want to do. And not only tomorrow on Dynamite, but actually tonight, the countdown special that is happening on TNT is specifically just that. It's about introducing you to these people, not just the characters, but even Chris Jericho's mystery tag partners. It's, it's very much about the human connection. And I know that just seems like words, but uh, hopefully when people see Dynamite, they'll understand what I mean in terms of that human connection and showcasing it to the world. Anthony Suter is next up. Anthony, are you with us? Yes, I'm right here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Awesome. Uh, so you guys have announced several dates all the way through the first week of December for the beginning of 2020, as far as weekly TV is concerned, can you shed a little light on what the strategy is for moving across the country and when some of the other side of the United States will actually get to see AEW Dynamite live uh, from their region? It's a really great question. And honestly, I, I wish I had kind of answered this at some point earlier, just in the last month, because people seem to think we may be neglecting the West Coast or uh, uh, the Upper Northwest, when in actuality, we're working our way down from the Eastern, you know, the Eastern Seaboard and then across through the Midwest. And that's just a logistical and cost measure. We're running real arenas. We don't want to run studio TV. We want to run real arenas and we want to bring this party to every, every city, A, B, C, D market. It doesn't matter. Uh, we want people to have a dang good time, and we have field tested this because all of us had been on the road. Me, for 11 years with WWE, and the Bucks with Ring of Honor, and then we were on the road together. So as we move across, and you mentioned January, and you know around well, Thanksgiving and stuff, we're back in Chicago, and then we're going to be moving our way out west. So fans who are on the west, who, who feel like we've, we've kept them out since Double or Nothing, we're definitely headed your way, and we'll definitely service as many of those markets as we can over there. To be a little bit more specific, I think we have the best market rep in the entire industry, and that being Raphael Morphy. I butcher his last name pretty often, but Raphael is an absolute amazing hire um, by all of the wrestling, and he is teaching us, because it's very great that this is a wrestling company, by wrestlers, but there are some things that us silly wrestlers don't know. And Raphael has been able to help make those inroads with buildings and things like that. He's been a real pro. So Raphael, we're putting all the pressure on him. We will definitely be heading west and uh, definitely in, in 2020. 
Thanks, Cody. We're going to read uh, Joseph uh, Joseph Sadzuski's, uh, uh question here uh, from, from the New York Post, and that is, Cody, how do you see being the elite and the Road Two series? How that complements what we're going to see on Dynamite? Well, it's a little bit of the buffet. I was told once that that's what you need to offer the wrestling fandom is a buffet. You need to give them a little bit of the high spot fueled bell to bell, unbelievable action. You need to give them a little bit of savage steamboat all the while you need to give them a little bit of Tully dusty. I know these are references to an older era, but there's different types of pro wrestling and there is no right way. There's no wrong way. Excuse me. There's no wrong way to do what we do. The only thing that matters is the fans appreciation of it. If they liked it, and we, we offer that. And being the elite is the absurd. It is the dead pool of wrestling. It is the fourth wall poking element of wrestling that was so taboo. And now it's pretty much, you see it all over the place. Spring break is popping up left and right. The, the Bucks set an absolute trend with that. And then what I do with the Road 2 series is old school, southern, traditional wrestling. And they still work together. It's what makes this band of the four of us function and what Kenny brings in with the Joshi women that he's brought in for the, the women's division, it's a whole nother element. So I think you'll, you'll never see those styles watered down. People will often kind of give us a hard time. Well, you, there has to be one vision for this. There has to be one. No, because there's not one fan in the audience. There's millions of fans worldwide. There is not one vision for this. Uh, there, there is an overall general vision in terms of all of our different styles and providing that buffet. Thanks, Cody. Um, next in line up now is Matt Visek. Matt, can you unmute? Yes, I just unmuted. How are you doing, Cody? I'm good, buddy. So I'm with the Vegas Bad Boys of Podcasting, and you did say a little bit about reaching across to the West Coast. That kind of threw this in my mind, and that is you did a great job with Double or Nothing and a great job with the uh, – the all in and all out um, on a pay-per-view basis. Once Dynamite's up and going, are you guys planning on starting like a, you know, a bi-monthly or a quarterly pay-per-view? More likely, leaning a quarterly. You know, we, we had talked originally about having just four pay-per-view events. We understand that pay-per-view is expensive and we understand that Less is more in our industry as far as building to these events and not having them just kind of willy nilly um, every month. Uh, so I would say more more along the lines of quarterly. There's talks about doing a UK tour, as I, I mentioned. There's talks about doing some uh, specials like Fight for the Fallen where there are charitable elements. Um, but yeah, we're looking at more four to five major pay-per-views um, as we go, and very likely after Full Gear, which is our third major pay-per-view, that fourth one, very likely, you guys can't see me, but I'm winking, will likely be on the West Coast. Next up is Christian Bruns. Christian, are you with us? Hey, Cody. Fans in Germany, France, and as well as other uh, smaller European countries are still wondering whether or not they will have access to Dynamite if these uh, countries are blocked from the subscription service on site. Do you have any information if this will change between now and tomorrow, or are fans being left out? I, I would hope fans wouldn't be left out. It's definitely something that we're looking at currently, and particularly not because you're asking me, and you're from Germany, correct? Sir? Oh, okay. Sorry. You are from Germany. Well, I was going to say the German market is massive. Uh, I just did a German magazine just uh, two days ago. Uh, I was in two wonderful sellouts in Paris in terms of France and that market. We don't want to leave anybody out. One of the things about having a major cable carrier uh, cover this company is that the international deals are very hard to navigate and they, they are beyond my depth. 
um, as, as an EVP, but we have the right people in place because we want the product everywhere. Germany, France, and the smaller European countries. Right now with Fight, I know that there are some places excluded and, and left out, but we're doing everything we can to get what they call in production ignitions um, to all these countries. And I'll, I'll, I'll do everything in my power because it was always our goal for everyone to see. You know, we don't have a, a network subscription service just yet. Uh, so we're working with the tools we have, and our focus was dynamite uh, to begin with, and then growing it out. So I would hope that uh, nobody gets left out in the in the first month, at least, of dynamite. Definitely something Mike Weber and Fight have done a great job uh, that we're all we're all working on. And believe me, Matt Nick, and Kinney, it's a question we regularly ask in our in our group meetings: is when are we going here? How do we get there? Because um, people want to see it. Next up is Jay Holland, and Jay, we'll need to have you unmute, please. I'm unmuted. How are you guys doing today? Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm doing all right. This is Jay Holland with the Unsanctioned Podcast, and uh, I'll catch you guys at Boston next week. Uh, my question for you, Cody, is seeing that how you know your father was such a visionary and, and creative of such iconic matches, such as you know war games, I guess my question is, within AEW, can we envision – of match creation of itself, similar to war games or even more expanded, uh, specifically that is for AEW that the wrestling world hasn't seen yet. Well, you mentioned war games, and I'm I'm kind of sitting here thinking to myself, I'd really love to just buy it back. And I wonder if they'd be willing for me to just to buy it back because Dusty came up with the match concept on a napkin in the parking lot. Arn Anderson was there. I got a witness. The one they do now isn't truly loyal to the old school rules of it. Maybe, maybe I can get, maybe I can get it back. But in the beauty, the beauty of that, War Games just came out of the experience of being around wrestling, seeing the horsemen build up, seeing the the good guys and, and their adversaries, and all of a sudden the light bulb went off. Hopefully, a match comes to us the same way. We started with the Casino Battle Royale, which is Nick's ja Nick Jackson's idea of doing almost a layered Royal Rumble. And I think with the women's one, which was far superior to the men's one, uh, I think we got the formula for that right. I would really hope that we come up with some great matchups on our own. I could always steal from my dad, but come on. Well, I wouldn't be, uh, he, he wouldn't be proud if I was just yanking all his ideas. I do have the Bunkhouse Stampede on lockdown if and when we need to also battle bowl if and when we need to but i know amongst us especially tony khan who seems like he's coming up with a different match concept every day i know we uh we can come up with something real original and maybe we float that out float that out to wwe for me see if i can buy back war games <laughs> thanks cody uh i'm going to read a question uh just uh, entered by jason powell Cody, will you be keeping an eye on your head-to-head -head competition on a monitor, or will you be focused solely on your own show? Oh, we'll be focused solely on our own show. We, uh, I think it would be arrogant of us if we had a monitor on the go position with um, what the competitor was doing at the time. Of course, we're not living under a rock. We, we, we're going to be aware and, and what's, you know, what's matched up against what and how they did, you know, when you get to look at all that data on Thursday. But uh, we've got to do us. We were always going to be on uh, TNT on, on, a, on a major cable network like this. So this was always in our plan. Uh, their move to USA, and this is not meant as a negative, so WWE diehards, please do not freak out, was a reactionary move towards us. So they can watch us. Uh, we'll be we'll be taking care of our own business. Thanks, Cody. Um, next up, Philip Antwine. Philip, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you, uh, Philip Antwine from the Bullet Cast out here in San Francisco, California. Um, what do you think is the promotion's biggest strength? Is it the in-ring action? Is it the promos? Is it the storylines? Or is it something else? Biggest strength is the in-ring action, for, for sure. So it's, it's the first thing you said, because I think the misconception now is that you cannot tell stories bell to bell. 
in between the ropes, stories like Ric Flair used to tell on a nightly basis. And you absolutely can tell those stories. So I think that is our biggest, the, the thing we have going for us is our bell to bell, our in-ring action. And then I, I spoke to it earlier. I think to accompany the in-ring action is the human connection, is find out who these people are. Our, our biggest strength, let me double back here slightly. Our biggest strength is all the things that we have been talking about and complaining about for 20 something years, if that makes sense. We've heard all that. If somebody was to try and spy on us and get the formula for what are they doing? Why are people into this? I don't understand. This isn't, this isn't good. No, it, it is good. It is good. See the crowd, see the continued sellouts. That's the value. It's a product people want to see. And we just want to spread that product and share it with these returners and casual fans who might have tuned out and will see it for the first time and see wrestling differently, but see something they recognize from, from way back if that makes any sense. But again, in, in the fairness of transparency here, the first thing in ring action is what sets us apart. Thanks, Cody. Uh, I'm going to call on Steve Menando for the next question. Uh, Steve, I believe you're on mute. If you can unmute, you'll be good to go. Hey, Cody, how's it going? Uh, Steve here from the Armchair Bookers podcast. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, buddy. Hey, thanks, man. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to have everybody on here today. This is really, really exciting, really awesome. We're all really stoked for uh, for tomorrow night's big event. Um, I want to talk, talk about one thing, actually two things, and kind of join them together here, because you talked a lot about um, the storytelling, right? You also mentioned you know, the, the potential quarterly pay-per-views. Do you feel that the infrequency in which you guys have pay-per-views is going to affect the ability to give long-term quality storytelling? Oh, no. I think... I think it only puts the priority for the stories to be on dynamite themselves. I was once told that TV is a commercial for the live events. Well, the best thing about this, the very healthy schedule that Tony Khan has offered is there are no weekend live events. It's just dynamite. That's our sole focus, meaning that is where the heart and soul of these stories go. There'll be stories specific to dynamite that aren't geared towards pay-per-views. So I think that will end up being a strength for both the pay-per-views and the weekly show itself. Thanks, Cody. Uh, Joseph Galizia. Joseph, are you um, are you with us? Hey, can you guys can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Not clear. Hey, Cody, how are you? Thank you so much for taking my call and my question. Um, wanted to talk about. Uh, Triple Mania, you got to team up with Psycho Clown and former UFC star Cain Velasquez. Uh, and he recently said in an ESPN interview uh, that he really likes what AEW is doing. Is he a guy that you foresee AEW keeping an eye on? Uh, and can you just talk about your experiences tagging with him at Triple Mania? It's definitely something, uh, somebody that I am keeping an eye on. Uh, Kane was one of those athletes, it's not even an athlete thing, it's almost just a strange natural ability to pick up our, our industry. Man, he picked it up so, so quick and he wasn't doing mixed martial arts Kane Velasquez. He was trying to do true lucha and he had worked with Psycho Clown, who's Psycho Clown if you haven't caught him, it's just amazing, what a, what a stud. Uh, so I was blown away by Cain Velasquez. I would love uh, to bring that tandem and that tag back uh, to all of the wrestling. I'm glad to hear he likes what we were doing. Uh, I like what he's done with AAA. I continue to monitor it. Um, and that might be something you see of a personal project for me if, uh, if and when Cain would like to come play ball with us. Um, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be down. Um, there's something very special. I mean, the man was a former UFC heavyweight champ and good, nice guy. Um, you know, represents a, a whole part of the world, just a special, special human being. Uh, I, I think he'd be a great fit to our family. And next up is TJ Quinn. TJ, are you uh, with us today? Uh, yes, I am. Um, thank you. Um, my question, um, first off, thanks for having me on, um, is you mentioned that you have a lot of people that are that had dropped off of wrestling fandom. How do you plan on getting those fans back into wrestling? I think the ticket is we have our demographic that 
that has kind of followed us around and they've, they've enjoyed what All Elite has been about and they, they've been part of this army. The reason the show was almost called Revolution is because whether some people like it or not, what's happening in wrestling right now, it's, it's a revolution and these revolutionary fans are part of it. I think it's about those revolutionary fans spreading the message, not unlike any pop culture hit today where you tell you, Hey, did you watch this show? Hey, did you, uh, you know, and we do that now via social media and these fun emojis. Uh, I was just doing it the other night. I met some people talking about American horror story. I think it's about appeasing and playing to this, this crew of fans that has got us to this point and them spreading the message that is all elite wrestling. And then the power of TV is not something you can dismiss. It's something that's said often, like, oh, once we have the power of TV, so many wrestling companies that couldn't get it wanted it. It truly is special. Warner Media has done such an absurdly good job with the marketing and the branding of AEW and, and sharing it with perhaps fans that that weren't fans. It's It's really... Absolutely, just I, I'm marveling at how well it, they've done of a job at Warner Media and the chief brand officer and the most beautiful woman in the world, my wife. I, it's amazing. Another key to getting to some people who've never seen wrestling is extrapolating on the character profiles you have. I'll give you an example. Brandon Cutler is wrestling MJF tomorrow, uh, tonight, or tomorrow on Dynamite. And they got into a Twitter beef over Dungeons and Dragons. And the amount of Dungeons and Dragons fans who have never even seen a dang wrestling ring, who are now tuning into this to see if MJF uh, basically gets shut up, it's really special. Um, and that's a way to, to kind of combine all the different fandoms. And I hope, I hope we can do that. There's a reason I go on social and kind of put my neck out there about the games I love and the teams I love and the shows I love. It's, I want to connect, uh, the interconnectivity that is, a is, is our world and the entertainment world. So I answered that with the biggest possible answer ever, but I, I hope that's how we can do it. Cody, I've got a question here from Michael Shalek uh, from SU Scoops. Cody, can you talk about the biggest challenge you've experienced thus far as an executive VP of AEW? Has anything really surprised you uh, about the process from the corporate side? You know, I think I was supposed to be really challenged up to this point, but I had the just absolute blessing of having had Dusty in my life who was an executive with Turner uh, and WCW and also a performer. I got to see firsthand uh, managing and producing a segment and then going out to the ring and performing yourself and performing at a high level. I wouldn't know what to do with this wrestling education I've got if it wasn't for AEW. I mean, I got three decades to talk everyday wrestling with Dusty Rhodes. I got 11 years to be around guys like Dean Malenko, Arn Anderson, Randy Orton, uh, all these wonderful people who taught me. So that's why I don't think I've been challenged by the corporate side of this job yet is I, this education was perfect for it. I'm sure there will things that will come up. There are things that a wrestler who didn't go to college like me, isn't fully aware of or in tune to. And the first thing I do is find somebody who is. I'll give you prime examples. Chris Harrington, who's the vice president of business operations. Raphael Morphy, the market rep. We, we've tried to flank ourselves with genuinely very smart people uh, when it comes to this. And Tony Khan, what a businessman that guy is. What a businessman and what a great champion and ally of the wrestling business. So I've yet to really be challenged by it all other than knowing when to take the headset off and start stretching. As simple and silly as that sounds, it's been like mental math for me, but it hasn't been a challenge yet, mainly because it's been too much fun. Cody, I've got one more that was uh, lobbed to us via email here uh, from John Alba uh, from the Spectrum Sports and Living the Gimmick podcast. John likes to know how hands-on uh, TNT is with the physical production of the TV show outside of cost. Will it 
will it have any say in the format slash rundown, or is that strictly on the AEW team? It's strictly on the AEW team. Uh, what you see, as far as Dynamite is concerned, they have been uh, absolute wonderful allies in terms of production. They uh, they do wonderful things with the NBA. If you look at some of the big wigs there at Turner with Brett, uh, with Sam, uh, with with uh, Kevin, and you look at what they've been able to do, they've offered us those resources. I'm th talking about something as functional as the difference between a jib cam and a flying jib cam. And to have that high res uh, next level production that the NBA has uh, partnered up with Keith Mitchell, who a lot of people on this call already know who Keith Mitchell is, former executive producer for World Class, turned WCW, I mean, the absolute man when it comes to this type of stuff. Uh, I, uh, they've, they've just been great allies. They've yet to uh, give us any type of ultimatums or network notes concerning the show. They, they're allowing us to go out there and play our music and hope that people love it. Great. We're, uh, we're, we're almost at time here. Cody, if you got time for one more question, we're going to spin the roulette wheel here. And it uh, looks like Tommy Walter comes up the winner here for the last question. Tommy, are you with us? Yes, I am. Wow, what a what an honor to be the last question. Tommy. How's it going, Cody? It's very, very good. How are you? I'm doing well. This is kind of a, a statistical question because <laughs> I'm a geek. But uh, so knowing how big of a statistician and, that Tony Khan is and data analysis and all that, how much will not only wins and losses, but Elda Bell uh, TV ratings, and also so just general fan uh, interaction. How much will that play into, I don't want to say scripts, but your general outline for say, the next six to 12 months? Well, you know, one of them is kind of the business of the business, which is super entertaining. And the other is more narrative, the content you see on the surface. I can tell you the concern, it isn't just the wins and losses. Almost look at it as how college football is um, is appropriated when you look at the quality of wins. One of the things that Tony did, which was really wonderful in his uh, in the press release with Sports Illustrated about me and Jericho, he talked about the quality of wins I had, uh, being Dustin and, and being Sean Spears, and that it'll it'll play a heavy role in the show. Wins, losses, the, the quality of wins, and then as the numbers go up in terms of matches, uh, that will be a really wonderful time to break out the, the heat chart and you start getting percentages on body parts and how many times uh, somebody has lost uh, to the walls, for example, or, or a code breaker. And that stuff will really help once our, our numbers start to, to go up in terms of actual matches. On the other side, we, we, we hope that that narrative element of it, the wins and losses mattering in the building and the prestige and the champion chips mattering. Uh, we hope that it will it will be congruent with the ratings and that they will go up with all that as well. Thanks, Cody. And, and you know, on behalf of everybody at AEW, I'd like to thank everybody who joined, uh, joined the teleconference here today. Um, we'll be distributing an audio copy shortly, and we're sorry we couldn't get to everybody and address everyone's questions. But we're really grateful for, for the time you spent with us this past hour. And if you have any follow-up questions, Here's what to do. Please email media at all elite wrestling. So that's media at all elite wrestling.com. And we'll get to them as best we can. We're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night on TNT. So thanks again and have a great day.